and welcome to Solve and Submit number 11. Let's go ahead and look at problem number one, or since we usually like to start at the beginning. Problem number one, we're asked to test the hypothesis that the proportion, the population proportion, for Oklahoma is equal to the population proportion for Texas. Two proportions, try to compare them. The information that we're given is that the number of successes in Oklahoma is 42. The number of successes in Texas is 98. Sample size in Oklahoma, 78. And the sample size in Texas is 143. Note that the research hypothesis or the claim is that they are the same. So the claim here is also P Oklahoma is equal to P Texas, which means that the alternative hypothesis is that they are not equal. We have our test statistic, if we actually want to calculate it. Test statistic is Z is equal to P1, we'll call it Oklahoma hat minus p hat texas minus p ok minus p texas all over that incredible square root if we really want to we can substitute everything here p hat remember or i'm sorry p bar remember it's equal to the total number of successes divided by the total number of attempts. And once we calculate this test statistic, we know it follows a standard normal distribution. We find the corresponding p-value. If the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. If it's greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. If it's greater than alpha, we don't have enough evidence to conclude that the proportions are not equal. Or we can use our calculator. Since this is a two sample proportions test, and this is the proportions test part, we'll use two prop, I can spell prop, and it's two prop z test because we have two samples. We're comparing proportions, the test statistic is z, and we're performing a test. And the test means that we're going to get a z value out and a p value. Let's just plug that information in. 42, um, 78, 98, 143. Alternative is not equal. Calculate. We get a z value of a negative 2.1652 and a p value of 0 0.0304. And that's A. B is, using the same information, construct a confidence interval for that difference. Construct a confidence interval for the difference between P oak and P tex. Well, that's just as easy. Since we're doing a confidence interval, it's going to be 2 prop Z int. So note that the 2 prop Z stays the same. What follows it is determined by what you're trying to calculate. If you're eventually trying to calculate a p-value, it'll be 2 prop z test. If you want a confidence interval, it's going to be 2 prop z int. It's located about the same place. 95% confidence interval because it states in the very top of the page, alpha equals 0.05. There's our confidence interval. We're 95% sure. 
that Texas has a higher zebra mussel infection rate than Oklahoma by between 1.2% and 28%. Zero is not in this confidence interval, therefore we also reject the null hypothesis. Okay, that's A. I mean, that's one. Two. For two, we have to calculate corrosion levels. We're given lots of information. it all in one place is very handy. So the claim is that the average corrosion level is the same. Since we're claiming the same, the claim is going to be equals, which means that the null hypothesis is also equals. Since the claim is equals, the alternative is going to be not equals. So keep that in mind. So we collect a sample size of 35 in Oklahoma, 45 in Texas. In the Oklahoma sample, the average is 25.8. Standard deviation of 6.1. In the Texas, it's 26.2 with standard deviation of 5.8. In part A, we're supposed to calculate a test statistic and get a p-value. Here's the formula. According to the book, this is going to be this, uh, distributed according to a T distribution with de degrees of free freedom equaling to the minimum of Texas minus 1 or in Oklahoma minus 1. Well, the sample size in Oklahoma is less than the sample size in Texas. So according to the book, degrees of freedom will be 40, I'm sorry, will be 34. Calculator does a better job at estimating the correct degrees of freedom. It uses the Satterthwaite approximation. It will differ from what your book uh, what your book answers will be, but this is not a book question. So we know what X bar Oklahoma is. We know what X bar Texas is. We know what the difference between mu Oklahoma and mu Texas is. We hypothesize it was zero. We know S squared Oklahoma, it's just 6.1 squared. We know N Oklahoma, 35. We know S squared Texas, which is 5.8 squared. We know N Texas, which is 45. We can crank through this, hopefully not making any button pushing mistakes. And compare it to a T distribution with number of degrees of freedom, 34, which is actually at the back of the book. Or we can use our calculator. Use our calculator correctly. Two samples. It's going to be a t-test. Why is it a t? We don't know sigma. Since we don't know sigma, we've got to use a t-test. And we plug the information into this calculator. x bar 1 is 25.8, s1 is 6.1, n1 is 35. x bar 2 is 26.2, s2 is 5.8, n2 is 45. Alternative hypothesis is not equal to. We never, ever, ever pool, don't pool, and then calculate. So we get a test statistic of negative 0 0.2973, and 
and we get a p-value of 0 0.7671. Since p is greater than alpha, we failed to reject the null hypothesis. We did not detect a difference in the average corrosion rate between Oklahoma and Texas. There may be a difference, we just didn't detect it. Now if we want to do a confidence interval, which is part b of this, we'll do 2 samp t int Confidence level again is 0.95 because the alpha given up at the top was 0.05. Again, we do not pool. So we're 95% confident that the difference in average corrosion rates between Texas and Oklahoma is between negative 3.083 and 2.2829. Note that zero is in there. Remember, confidence interval is just a set of all reasonable values for the, popula uh, for the population parameter. The population parameter here that we're actually estimating is the difference in means. Zero is in there. So zero is a reasonable difference for these two means. In other words, it's reasonable to conclude that there is no difference. You might be wrong. This is statistics. We don't know right or wrong. This is all about weighing evidence. So there we go. Part one was two prop z test and two prop z int. Part two was two samp t test and two samp t int. The test parts give you the test statistic and the p-value. The int part gives you the confidence intervals. Hopefully this was helpful. See you in class tomorrow.